Welcome to another edition of the Litigation Psychology Podcast, brought to you by Courtroom Sciences. This is Dr. Bill Kanaski. Welcome. Another solo podcast for you today. Checked into this hotel at midnight last night, and that's 5 a.m., so not much sleep, folks. But of course, when I check in, the number one question I always ask is, hey, is there water in the room? Got to have my water. Water's good for you. Guy looks right at me and says, of course there is, Mr. Kanaski. Okay. So, of course, I get a layup here. And there's, he was right. There was two bottles of water. And here's what, by the way, here's what the hotels are back up to. Okay. Inflation. But here, here's what the hotels are doing now. Yeah, there's two bottles of water up here. Uh, labeled at $6 a piece. Seriously? Come on, Hyatt. I mean, come on. We have ranted on this podcast before about inflation. My three egg omelet is now a two egg omelet. My eight ounce filet is now a five, now a five ounce filet. Prices are going up. It's beyond ridiculous. But the, back to the charge of me for a bottle of water. Six dollars for a bottle of water? Hyatt, come on. Uh, I didn't pick this hotel. I got a speech coming up. I will be on stage. I will be on stage in two hours. And uh, looking forward to that. And uh, have a three-hour keynote speech. So my voice will be shot. But a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. You know, how to avoid uh, bad outcomes in litigation. Right? There's a lot of material that I have on that. It's not just, it's it's really, listen, it's not the trials, okay? Verdicts, these crazy verdicts you read about, statistically rare, okay? It's these nuclear settlements we got to watch out for because you're going down 35 to 3 at half time. And then you're trying to make it up and it's just not going to happen. Then you end up settling the case for way too much. Not good. That's the plan. So those witnesses better be ready at deposition. Effective deposition testimony changes everything. Shifts leverage into your favor. Horrible deposition testimony does the exact opposite. And you're going to pay. Oh, you're going to pay. It's all preventable. It's really, really all preventable with the right system. Jump on the mongoose method train, folks. Jump on the train. Jump on the bandwagon. We've got plenty of room for you. Uh, today we have to. We, let's. Let, we're going to talk about something very important today. Um, is uh, let's talk about deposition testimony and something that everybody's skipping that's leading to big problems. Okay, leading to big, big, big problems. And I see it every week. So. Uh, defense attorneys, listen up because you're making this huge mistake every one, every single week. Because I watch you, I listen to what you say to the witnesses. And there's this assumption that it's a erroneous, false assumption that the beginning of the deposition, maybe that first 30 minutes, when plaintiff's counsel is going to be questioning your witness on background information, there's this faulty assumption that that's not important. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a key part of the plan of attorney plan. Key part of the plan. It's part of the setup. It's part of the setup. And if your witness doesn't understand that, they will start forming bad habits in that first 30 minutes on the background questions and then those bad habits carry over into the real deposition okay now depositions start in one of two ways we've discussed this but it's good to re redundancy is a great thing as a psychology professor at the university of north carolina chapel hill taught me redundancy is a great thing helps you learn okay repetition so I'm going to repeat this over and over and over, okay? 
the start of the deposition is important. It starts in one of two ways every single time. It either starts with sugar or it starts with vinegar. Sugar or vinegar. And I mean, I read deposition transcripts and break them down every single week. Okay. My rough estimation is that 80% will start with sugar. And what that means is plaintiff's counsel will be nice. They will be courteous. They'll be friendly. They'll be your buddy. And then everything that you taught your witness goes right out the window. Because the witness's brain does not understand what's going on. The witness's brain says, oh, wow. This attorney's not so bad. They're smiling. They're being nice. They look interested in my answers. Well, they're asking me about my background, my education. This ain't going to be so bad. Eh, wrong. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be terrible. Why? Because it's a setup. It's a classic setup. Classic setup. Hey, when you go to the car dealership, right? What's the first 20 or 30 minutes what the car salesman like? Are they asking you a really tough question about sales? No. They are buttering you up. Like a turkey. The day before Thanksgiving. They're not being nice to you because they like you. They want you to hand them your checkbook. That's exactly what's happening here. And so what I noticed is that defense counsel will tell the witnesses, hey, in the prep sessions, you know, hey, yeah, they're going to ask you about your background, blah, blah, blah. You know, look over your resume. And then they jump right into the case. No, that is a mistake. Because what happens is, because I see it during every training session, during my questioning, I force the attorney to start there. Hey, yes, ask the background questions. And what happens? The you start with sugar, these witnesses get comfortable. They they completely they don't think. They just start answering spontaneously because they're behaving like it's a social conversation. They answer questions quickly. They talk too much. They volunteer for oh every principle we teach goes out the window during the background questions. Why? They're background questions. They're not perceived as a threat by the brain. So then after 20 or 30 minutes of background questions, the plaintiff's attorney will transition into important conduct questions, case questions, reptile questions. And the witness's brain fails to adjust and bam, your witness is screwed. How you start the deposition is absolutely critical. Witnesses need to be not told. This is where you guys screw everything up. Well, I told my witness this. It's, a, it's like me telling my 15-year-old to keep his room clean. It, come on. You have to teach them how to do it. You have to practice the background questions. The witness needs to be trained that A, it's a tra background questions are a trap. Plaintiff's counsel does not give a shit about the background. It's a trap. So what do you do, witnesses? Well, you start to use your skill set immediately from question number one. Pausing. Okay, forcing cognition. Establishing the correct pace, which is painfully slow. Then the quote, but I, but these are easy background questions, Doctor Kanaski. Do I really have to pause for? Yes, yes, damn it, you're damn right you do, because you have to establish the right habits early so they carry over into the important questions. Well, these are background questions. Do I really need to keep my answer short? Yes, yes, it's a trap. Designed, the entire trap is designed to get you off of your game. Like when you go to the car dealership, the car salesman knows you've been on CarMax website. You've been on Kelly Blue Book website. 
You're all over Google and eBay. You've done your homework. Hell, you've probably printed the stuff out. So when you get to the car dealership, they don't just jump right into how much does this car cost? They want to get you off your game. What do they do? They offer you a bottle of water, a cup of coffee. Hey, how you doing? Where are you from? And then what does your dumbass do? You forget about all the research you did online. And you're like, I'm doing great. Wow, this is a nice car dealership. How are you? Where are you from? And you've just fallen right into the trap. Okay? How this game starts is critical. And defense counsel, you are not spending enough time educating and instructing your witnesses on how to handle the start of the deposition. Because if they start wrong, everything you taught them will go out the window. This is how it goes. Okay? They have to be trained. Yeah, short answers. We're not going to volunteer information. And we, here's the key. The witness brain has to understand it's a trap. I don't care how nice they are. It's a trap. Yeah, the next four hours and five hours, six hours, six, plenty of traps there. But the traps start in the first 20, 30 minutes during the background questions. So when the respectful, courteous, gregarious, I love that word, by the way, gregarious, what a great word, okay, friendly, cordial, there you go, great synonym, plaintiff attorney starts with the background questions, the witness brain needs to be saying, warning, warning, ding, 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 this is a trap, I know what to do, I've been down this road, because I was well trained. Now, a Dr. Kanaski trained, that's, I'm, I'm referring to myself in the third person, for Christ's sake. Oh, God. Like Ricky Henderson. Okay, so a Dr. Kanaski trained witness will start off the right way because I beat it into their head. I tell them these background questions are important because it establishes neurocognitive habits that will last the rest of the depth. So don't get into friendly mode at the beginning of the death. Oh, gosh. Six, I'm, so I'm drinking my $6 bottle of water. I'm going to give them an earful when I check out. Absolute earful. This is just, this is unbearable. Everything's way too expensive, folks. Um, yeah, so sugar. Watch out for sugar. That's 80% of the depths. Now, 20% of the depths start with vinegar. And what happens is this is when the plaintiff attorney starts off in a very aggressive manner with an attitude with the same exact Motivation, getting your witness off of their game. Neurocognitively getting them off of their game. Remember, if you're really nice to somebody and you kiss their ass for 20 minutes, it gets people off of their, it gets the witness off their game. Because the witness isn't thinking, hey, this is a trap. I'm being set up. No, they're thinking, hey, what a nice guy. Here, it's the aggression, it's the threat that is designed to get the witness off of their game. You'll get attorneys that start out with a very aggressive attitude, aggressive tone, aggressive body language. Like I am talking right now. Because I'm angry over a $6 bottle of water. Hear that? And so these attorneys very cleverly catch the witness off guard and the witness goes directly into fight or flight amygdala hijack response patterns. The beginning of any witness, every witness needs to be told the beginning of the deposition, sugar and spice or vinegar 
It's a set up. So the 20%, the vinegar, the threatening attorney, will start to get under the start to threaten the witness. So I'm reading, uh I, I really, really want to tell you who this attorney is. I can't. I cannot tell you. But I'm reading his deposition, and this guy's famous for this. And he starts the deposition by giving this lecture, very aggressive lecture to the witness about how important it is that they just took an oath to tell the truth. And how if they don't tell the truth, it's perjury. They can get into a lot of trouble. And if they don't answer the questions the right way and answer all the questions, you know, we're calling the judge. You're going to get in trouble. And then goes to this extreme, which is freaking hilarious. But this is what this guy does. He goes, he goes, sir, this is from the transcript. I read this transcript yesterday. He goes, sir, here's how honest you have to be. And here's how serious I am. I want you to imagine Jesus Christ is sitting here at the at the table, at the conference room table. Would you lie to Jesus? No, you wouldn't. Bad things would happen if you lied to Jesus, wouldn't they? That's how honest I need you to be during this deposition, as if Jesus Christ was right here, right here sitting next to me. That's how honest I need to be. Do you agree to be that honest, sir? That's how the deposition started. Oh, holy shit. Other depositions start with them skipping the background or asking maybe one or two questions. State your name for the record. Who do you work for? What's your current? And then the fourth question, wham, isn't it true? <laughs> you, <laughs> you were negligent in this case and caused harm. Isn't it true you violated the standard of care? Like the fourth question. And the witness brain is going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wasn't expecting this right now. Exactly. That's the whole point. By the way, I'm watching college football. Uh, it was uh, it was week zero a couple weeks ago. Not week one. Week zero. Where they have a couple, they have a handful. Notre Dame played Navy. Mopped the floor at them. But Florida played Utah, which is supposed to be a close game. Utah comes in. Uh, their starting quarterback's hurt. Backup quarterback starts. Utah gets the ball to start the game. They're at their own 25-yard line. First play of the game with a backup quarterback. Now, if you're the Gators, what do you think? Hey, backup quarterback. You know, they're probably going to start by, you know, trying to establish a run game. If they do throw it, you know, something safe. It's a backup quarterback. Something safe. Something to get them going, build confidence, right? What does Utah do first play of the game? Play action fake, 75-yard bomb. Touchdown Utah, first play of the game, 7 nothing. Expectations. It was a trap, Florida Gators, and you fell for it. No one saw it coming. No one. And that is a strategy that about 20% of the players. Are. So how do we get around this? Educate and train the witness that it's a trap. The background questions are a trap. I don't care how nice they are. It's a trap. And you want to start off the right way. It's absolutely critical. And the skills skills that I teach them, I tell them, and they argue with me. They're like, I really got to do that in the beginning. Mean, yes, in the beginning, yes. Because you're going to start developing shitty habits. You're going to answer questions spontaneously and too quickly. You're going to say, you give too much information. You're going to volunteer information. You're going to start agreeing with things. You're going to stop thinking, and you're going to start talking like you're at a social event. And then that's going to carry over into the case questions. We cannot have that. Completely. 100% preventable. But no one teaches it. 
I do. Dr. Steve Wood does. Ava Hernandez does. They're on my team. We've got to get together. It's it, it's it's a it's I mean, this is a trick that's gone back decades and decades and decades. And you've all heard the, my mother told me, my grandmother told me this. You're gonna get further with sugar than vinegar. And generally that's true. And it works. But you have to watch out for the vinegar. Because then your witness goes right into fight or flight, amygdala hijack, defensive mode. And now they can't, remember, the amygdala hijacks the prefrontal cortex. The brain center for rational, logical thought, judgment, executive decision making. That's the area of the brain your witness needs to use to answer these questions. And now they can't because they're amygdala hijacked because they weren't ready they weren't ready for the Utah first play, the 75-yard bomb. And some witnesses, or sorry, some attorneys, plaintiff attorneys do that. So what do you do? You train them and educate them for both types of openings. Rather, defense attorneys telling your witness, hey, yeah, they're going to start with some background questions. So, you know, review your resume and then jump right into the case during your witness prep sessions. This has to be choreographed. Practice like you're going to play. Because if you don't, the depth's going to start and your witness will start wrong. If you start the depth wrong, it's going to end wrong. Ask the Florida Gators how the rest of that game went. That play crushed them. The whole defense, the whole team went to amygdala hijack. They couldn't run their plays. They were terrible. Why? Because they got embarrassed on national TV on the first play of the game against the backup quarterback. And every one of their players lost their mind. Amygdala hijack. And they, they couldn't get it together. They looked terrible. Coaching. Poor coaching. Billy Napier. But in our litigation example, our who's who's the poor coach? That would be you. It ain't going to be me. They hire me as your coach. I'm drilling this into their head. All right, it's twenty two after the hour. I've got I've got to go. I've got to go get ready for this speech. I've got to go get ready for this speech. I am looking forward to this. Um, here in beautiful uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, Doug, Doug, Doug Marcello is speaking tomorrow. This will be good. This will be good. Um, start to yeah, listen, these depths have got to start the right way. Uh, defense counsel, start taking those background questions more seriously because that's where the manipulation starts. Not an hour into the depth at the very beginning. All right. All right. I'm out. Litigation Psychology Podcast. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, we'll definitely see you next time. Uh, we're going to end this year very, very strong. We're approaching episode 200. Got to come up with something special. I, I don't really know what I want to do for episode 200. But uh, that's a really, really big step for me personally, for courtroom sciences, for Dr. Wood, Ava, Ava Hernandez, who's now in the bullpen and be part of this litigation psychology uh, uh podcast rotation having fun of it disseminating information to our audience and plaintiff attorneys you are more than welcome to listen to my podcast i love it i listen to your podcast that's what i'm gonna about but in fact i'm talking about that today in my speech because i'm telling the audience the plaintiff's bar has podcast they're out there telling you exactly what they're doing and you're not listening, you dumbasses. And by the way, I got to tell you, the plaintiff podcasts out there are fantastic. They're very, very well done. They are not as good as mine. They are not as good as this podcast. But ladies and gentlemen, there are really, really good plaintiff attorney pod. And they they'll tell you exactly what they're doing. How they're beating you. Their strategy. They, they tell you. They're not afraid. Just like I'm not afraid on this podcast to tell a plaintiff attorney, you are not going to defeat this witness because I've trained them 
<laughs> to where they're bulletproof. It's a nice try. I have no problem with them listening to me. Go listen to them. Go on Spotify. Go on YouTube. YouTube's probably best. It all pops right up. Know thy enemy. Litigation Psychology Podcast, Dr. Bill Kanaski. We'll see you next time.